Blizzard is but a shadow of what it once was. But how did this happen? The cataclysmic downfall of Blizzard Entertainment is very well known. When you look through the many blunders of modern Blizzard, you see mistake after mistake. But if when you look at modern Blizzard, all you see is mistake after mistake. And the successes that once were plenty are pretty much exclusively relegated to the annals of history at this point. If you track this back to the beginning, there is one specific choice, one particular horse, that ushered in the beginning of the end. Like a horseman of the apocalypse whose appearance was the start of a butterfly effect chain reaction. The horseman of pestilence. ...that would bring upon the demise of one of the most revered companies in gaming. In 2008, Wrath of the Lich King. Hey, but Microsoft still paid something like 70 billion for this company. And then they went to Valve and said, Hey Gabe, hey Gabe, we're gonna offer you like 5 billion for the whole of the PC marketplace. Huh? Huh? And, Val uh, and, and Gabe and laughed at them. King had released and is seen as one of the best WoW expansions of all time. Funny enough, in 2008, Blizzard was also acquired by everyone's favorite company, Activision. Interesting that the best WoW expansions are usually seen as the ones developed immediately before Activision was in the picture, by some cosmic coincidence. Ah, ah, I mean, let's be real, Burning Crusade was kinda cool, but it wasn't that as good as Classic itself. Less than one year later, in 2009, Blizzard would start selling the very first virtual items for World of Warcraft. WoW Hell had launched yeah. in 2004 and had operated for years with no microtransactions. Give it one year with Activision vaguely in the picture, and suddenly store pets are popping up. There's no way these two things could possibly be related. The pet store had been announced, and the feedback was very negative. The Hell yeah, that's what I like to see, people stepping up and rejecting modern day trash. The Pandaren Monk pet and the little KT pet would be available for $10 each. The catch was that half of the proceeds from the sales of one of these pets would be donated to charity. For one. many players, this softened the blow of the introduction of microtransactions to the game. It made- Hey, it just proves once again, you can do the most scummiest things possible, but as long as you slap a charity at the end, you're completely fine. The initial feedback a little mixed, because it's hard to criticize a company who is going to donate to charity. That said, play- I think only fools think it's hard to donate, uh, to, to criticize someone who's donating to charity or whatever. Again, look at the whole Mr. Beast situation. <laughs> He's donating to charity, yeah, but only, only driven by greed. Players immediately found it strange that only part of the sales of one of the pets would be donated. They felt that this was a calculated decision to introduce microtransactions while hiding behind charity to dodge criticism. The users that called out Blizzard for hiding behind charity to ultimately make more money were often insulted by other players for not wanting to help a charity. It is a- Hell yeah, I don't want to help a charity. Very smart move for a company to introduce my- I'm gonna say it outright, I don't trust charities. Most charities are blatantly almost the, the equivalents of scams. They donate, what, one-tenth of the money they got to the actual charity cause and everything else is gonna go to inner expenses and, you know, s stuff. For transactions like this, because criticizing it becomes much more difficult. Side note, this video is not monetized. I don't like the idea of- I am gonna monetize it though. Criticizing a donation to charity and, and profiting from it in any way. If this video does eventually generate any money, I will donate 100% of it to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. With that said, Blizzard had sneakily introduced the idea of paying for in-game items despite you already paying a monthly fee. Thank you, Blizzard. Considered normal now, but just over a decade ago, this was seen as greedy and a betrayal by Blizzard. Traitor! How fa It still is? It still is seen as greedy, unnecessary, and just a way to generate money for companies that don't need the money. Fast things change. With the huge profit of selling virtual items, Blizzard would surely never do it again. <laughs> In March of 2010, two new items were data mined, Little XT and this Starry Horse. Players were excited to learn how to get these new items and 
bro also you know the horse was a big thing but then there was the lich king helmet or what was that microtransaction that one made blizzard do that slash spit is no longer targetable on players now that was an insane one and we're trying to figure out where they would drop in game one month later blizzard would announce the method to get these new items use pickpocket on your mom's purse loot her credit card and submit that information smart smart and in the blizzard store the amount had a 100 percent drop rate players were upset the amount of forum posts you can find about this from 2010 is incredible 25 dollars even more than the monthly subscription fee the mount also happened to aesthetically fit the theme of ulduar an in-game raid at the time almost as if it should have just been a drop in the raid this was seen mm. again as a greedy move and a step in the wrong direction for blizzard players vowed they would i mean after all the wrong steps in all the wrong directions oh man what's one more step at this point this is how corruption takes hold just one little thing this is why you never capitulate to any of these absolutely brain dead demands this is why you never give away your rights this is why you never agree to agree this is why you never do any of this the moment you take give them the finger they're gonna take the whole goddamn arm and tell you that you should be grateful would not buy this mount it made two million dollars in the first four hours this oh, was pure sorry. profit considering how easy it is for a developer to make something like this knowing blizzard this was probably a job for an intern there was a queue of over 140,000 people to purchase the Celestial Steed on release. According to Jason Hall, an ex-Blizzard employee... The Disgusting. Ah, well, well, what do you want? World of Warships is played by a lot of people, and a lot of those people are absolutely losers. And those who bought the Celestial Mount, without exception, are bad. The profit that Blizzard received from this single store mount was greater than the profit from StarCraft 2. Yeah, here's the biggest sadness, dude. I worked two years... Oh yeah, I heard about this. And yes, obviously. ...of overtime... ...straight on StarCraft 2, Wings of Liberty. StarCraft 2, Wings of Liberty made less money than the horse, the first Sparkle Pony horse in World of Warcraft. This is because it takes a lot of money to make a game. It takes almost no money to make one cosmetic item in a game. One of those things carries... Now, the irony of him actually showing League of Legends, because League of Legends is gonna want you to believe that making a skin is actually serious investment, and that making a bad skin is somehow magically unprofitable. Yes, I'm not kidding. Riot Games actually is trying to convince people of this. Oh, we can't make skins. They cost so much money. And if we make a bad one, we lose money and stuff like that. It's insane. And cosmetic item in a game. One of those things carries a lot of risk, and the other carries no risk at all. As of now, there have been 28 different mounts on the Blizzard store, as well as 23 pets, 5 in-game toys, and a bunch of transmogs. Like a horseman of the apocalypse, the celestial steed had usher- Oh, wait, 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 did we see it? I think we- yeah, here it is. Crown of Eternal Winter. This one was the spit one. Oof. Smogs. Like a horseman of the apocalypse, the celestial steed had ushered in the beginning of the end. Blizzard had realized the incredible profit available through microtransactions, and as we now know, Blizzard would never be the same. There has not been one game from Blizzard since that has not involved microtransactions in some way. It's difficult to imagine how these business practices could get more predatory. Luckily for us, this video is a about Blizzard. So of course, they found a way. Overwatch released in May of 2016 and cost $40 on release. Wow, that's a cheap price for a full- God, I want Widowmaker to step on me. Full game. Do you know what's an even better way to make money off of your loyal fans than some- Man, the fact that you nowadays we can look back at the load boxes and the Overwatch 2 community is pretty much 100% in agreement that loot boxes are a better microtransaction system and less predatory than what's currently happening in Overwatch. Wow. What?
when loot boxes are less predatory than the other things that Blizzard does. That's insane. Selling them content for a game that they already paid for. Don't sell them a cosmetic that they want. Sell them the chance at a cosmetic that they want. The main way to unlock things in-game was via loot boxes, a great way to introduce kids to gambling. Blizzard would give you some free spins on the- Hey! Kids love gambling, okay? The kids yearn for the mines at the end of the day also. The slot machine, of course. This way you can microdose the rush of flushing your money away at a casino. You can really experience what it feels like to be a rat in a Skinner box. Thank you, Blizzard. The good thing about Overwatch was that you did earn free slot machine spins relatively fast. This meant that you could, eventually, get the cosmetics that you wanted for free. Blizzard realized their mistake here. Oh no! The game was later re-released, A2 was put after the name, a battle pass was added, and was heavily monetized. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a battle pass is worse than a loot box. Again, thank you, Blizzard. Blizzard already had Hearthstone available, which was, of course, free to play with a microtransaction system. It was hugely- Anyone who calls my, uh, Hearthstone unironically or NATCG free to play, it clearly has not played them. Really ...successful, and Blizzard learned from this. Fans had been waiting desperately for a new Diablo game, and Blizzard would deliver. They moved oh, the action no. RPG to mobile, which is how everyone preferred. Dude, Immortal was, I think, a huge wake-up call for many people because there was no way to say anything else but money grab. There, there, there was just no way to say anything else that, that Immortal is anything but a money grab. ...prefers to play fast-paced action games. What a coincidence, the mobile market is also hugely profitable. It could cost up to $110,000 to fully gear up in Diablo Immortal. And then they, then Blizzard looked at it and said, We can make that bigger. We, we can make it cost more money. And they did. Oh yes, because when the bales are out of money to spend, because they have finally acquired everything 100k later or whatever, the thing is, Blizzard could just introduce another shitty mechanic that boosts your character's strength roughly by 10-20%, and it requires a whole other 100k investment. And considering it's a, it's a phone game, well, do you not have phones? Whales are gonna buy it. They're not gonna complain, as long as there's just a little bit of that shrill in the sea floating around for them to uh, own. Because this is literally Diablo Immortal, by the way. The reward for being a whale and spending money on the game is destroying people who have spent less money or no money in PvP. Because it's so brain dead, it requires absolutely no skill, and the higher item levels always win. Of course, this doesn't mean that it's pay to win or anything like that. You could do this for free. It would only cost you about 10 years. The best thing about Diablo Immortal was this incredible moment from BlizzCon. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. <laughs> did you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys don't have phones. Phone. Right? As it would turn out, they did in fact phones. have phones. Diablo Immortal generated over $500 million in its first year, well over $1 million per day. What? Of course, Blizzard would eventually release Diablo 4 for console and PC in June of 2023. The game- You know what makes me sad? That there are so many people in the world who unironically have nothing better to do with their lives. They don't have goals, they don't have anything like that. I know a lot of people. And the ones that don't spend money on microtransactions are people who have goals, aspirations, things that they want to achieve in life and whatnot. But people who don't really have any goals in their life, man, they are, they are just a slave to microtransactions, sadly. Now, some are more than others, granted. And yes, even people with goals and aspirations are gonna, you know, time to time spend like 20 bucks on some kind of, you know, game that they shouldn't. That's completely normal. A lot of us are like that, including myself. But, man, the people who spend the most, it's, it's just sad. The game featured a battle pass and in-game store. If you didn't know any better, you might think that's reasonable. A free-to-play yeah. game tends to have features like this. But thankfully, you do know better. 
because we're talking about Blizzard. No, 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 no. Diablo 4 is a full price game with a full price tag. You pay Blizzard for- By the way, the full price tag is 60 bucks because three days early. The privilege of being able to pay them even more using their in-game store. While you're in there, you may as well pick up the battle pass too. Oh, and try not to make eye contact with the 65. Dude, listen, the, the battle pass was so bad and no one wants the battle pass in Diablo 4. It is an absolute atrocity against God, that stupid battle pass. There is literally nothing good in it. And you know what's the crazy part? Battle pass, be people spending money on a battle pass that's worthwhile is actually normal, I would say, and increases your fun of the game. For example, in Dota, while I played it, I did buy battle passes. It was fun. It was great. Didn't regret my decisions at all. But it's something like, uh, you know, Diablo 4, Magic the Gathering Arena. Those battle passes are so atrociously dog water. Why would you ever buy them? They're just not worth the money. Dude, even if, a ba even if these battle passes cost $3, I would not buy them. They just don't have the value to anything. They're just sad and absolutely bad. This is why Blizzard made it. That you activated your one premium battle pass with a click without any confirmation. <laughs> so people accidentally spend the money on the battle pass. That's what Blizzard did. No confirmation, no anything. Just accidentally misclick. There you go. Boom. You're locked in, baby. Five dollar horse. Inflation really hit Blizzard hard. In true Activision Blizzard fashion, there's some sneaky marketing happening here too. See, the horse mount is not actually $65. It is a bundle where you get the horse mount plus about $65 of in- Oh god, I remember this. Some people unironically tried to defend this garbage. Oh no, it's not. The horse is not actually 60 bucks. You get 20 bucks for of platinum also. This is- Blizzard's giving you a good deal actually. Oh my god, these people are so gone game currency. This is another marketing trick. Players will see this and think this is a free horse mount because you do also get $65 of currency. However, the statement is still true. To get this horse, you must pay $65 on top of what you already paid for the game. Activision Blizzard excels at these shady marketing tactics. Yep. For context, Larian Studios released Baldur's Gate 3, an incredible game that is complete. No microtransactions to be seen for $10 less. To be clear, the Diablo 4 horse costs $5 more than Baldur's Gate 3. Blizzard's manipulative tactics to squeeze every dollar out of their fans. You know what? At the end of the day, I, even, I can't even blame companies for doing this because it's just free money on the table. Do it. It's... That you don't need to buy the horse because it has no power in it. It's not pain to win. It's literally just a bad looking horse. That's it. Nothing really special about it at the end of the day. Ends shows no signs of slowing down. Warcraft Rumble, their latest mobile game, is built completely around this system. It looks kind of like a slot machine because it practically is one. This game is what you get when a company learns about dark patterns online and decides yeah. to do an any percent speed run of exploiting their fans. The online PvP starts off with a level cap, so when you play against other players, your armies are usually the same level. As you rank up, this cap gets higher and is quickly removed completely. This I heard about Warcraft Rumble, but I still don't exactly know what this is. This is like some kind of clash of clans thing? This means that the ranked matchmaking can put you against players whose units are at a higher level and therefore stronger than yours. It is literally pay to win. The bigger wallet wins. By the time this becomes obvious to the player, they have already invested a significant amount of time and probably money. This is unfortunately common in this type of game. This does not make this practice acceptable. Exploiting someone is not acceptable just because someone else exploited them first. The blizzard that exists today is clearly not the same blizzard that made some of my favorite games. And it literally isn't. The people who made the company what it was and made the games what they were aren't there anymore. I intentionally didn't cover the Warcraft 3 Reforged issue because this video would be at least an hour. Hey, hey, the reason why uh, half of these people are not there is because of misconduct allegations and blah blah blah. Hey, you have to choose, okay? 
because the competent people are going to do things like that because they can get away with it. Do you want the competent people who have bad moral values to run things and have a good game? I personally choose that every time. Or do you want a bunch of social justice loser warriors who are completely trash at their jobs and you get uh, you get to shove down feminist propaganda your throat because reasons. You have a choice to make. What it was and made the games what they were aren't there anymore. I intentionally didn't cover the Warcraft 3 Reforged issue because this video would be at least an hour long. While the yeah. downfall of Blizzard is well known and Blizzard has certainly fallen in the eyes of their fans, to the shareholder, Activision Blizzard is doing better than ever. The manipulative business tactics of recent years are not blunders of an old company. They are intentional design choices of a new one. Making great games is not the goal after all. The goal is to make money and they are doing exactly that. In quarter two of 2022, mobile was 51% of Activision Blizzard's quarterly earnings. The largest contributor was King, the Candy Crush company. King has generated over $20 billion in revenue from Candy Crush alone. For yeah, and it primarily targets housewives and the finance. Damn. For comparison, the entire lifetime revenue of the StarCraft franchise is just over $1 billion. In short, don't expect a StarCraft 3, but do expect a mobile game drowning in microtransactions. When you think of an amazing game, you might think of Warcraft 3, early World of Warcraft, or Baldur's Gate 3. When a shareholder thinks of an amazing game, they think of Candy Crush and the ridiculous return on investment. I do want to stress, this is not the fault of the average employee at Blizzard. Most people who want to work at Blizzard likely do it because of a passion for Blizzard games. Unfortunately- And they're idiots for doing that, honestly. Blizzard has been dead for a long time, and now it's just some kind of uh, creature skin walking its corpse. It is what it is. Well, at the end of the day, 10 out of 10, actually. That was Lost Levels. 10 out of 10? Bye-bye.